Alright, so this is going to be my review of Wolverine Goodbye Chinatown, which is part of the Jason Aaron run, and the artwork is done by Ron Garney. Um, this is pretty cool. It's kind of like with Astonishing X-Men Exalted, where that deals with the first of how Cyclops was kind of dealing with the first week after Schism. This is kind of what Wolverine was kind of going through after the events of Schism shortly after. This also kind of answers the question of how did Wolverine get the money to you know, b rebuild a school in the other side of the country. Turns out that, <laughs> and Wolverine makes it very clear, I've been, along for, I've been alive for a very long time, you think I wouldn't have money stashed away? It also turns out that Logan is a kingpin of, the Chi of Chinatown. He is known as the Black Dragon, and he's been kind of keeping this secret for a while. And it, I love how just nonchalant he is about it. He's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm the king of a Chinese triad in Chinatown. I'm called the Black Dragon, and yeah, this is how I've been making money. <laughs> this is what kind of... This, he said, this is what funds everything I've ever done comes from this money. <laughs> And I, here's the big thing I love about Jason Aaron's Wolverine series. It can be completely absurd and serious at the same time. He can go from absurd to dark and serious just at a drop of a hat. And I think that's what everyone, you know, re re mostly remembers about Jason Aaron's Wolverine ru run, is that he had this... <laughs> he basically had this huge level of absurdity to it, but still had, you know, it could still feel like a Marvel story, and, you know, be a dark and serious story, while at the same time being completely re goddamn ridiculous. So, Wolverine discovers that someone has stolen his money. Someone has stolen his money, and now he's, go he's basically going out to find them and basically kill them. Alongside his former kung fu master, Master Po, as well as some kid who, he, who is part of his Black Dragon clan. Um, yeah, so the ba so alongside Gorilla Man from Agents of Atlas and Fat Cobra from one of the Immortal Weapons, um, the, the group heads down to the center of the Earth to fight drug lords, D-list Wolverine villains, and dragons. Let me repeat that for you. Wolverine, alongside a talking gorilla, a fat guy who knows Kung Fu, fight dragons at the center, uh, near the center of the Earth, and the main point of it all is that it's drug trade. Now, the main villain of this, ser of this story is called Jade Claw, who, those who don't know, she's a Agents of Atlas villain, who is the grandniece of a classic uh, Marvel villain called Yellow Claw, and was also the lover of Jimmy Woo. And this woman is... <laughs> she's talking about all the... You know, she basically... You know, she doesn't really have a, a grand take-over-the-world kind of scheme. It's more like, no, I just want to be the biggest drug lord on the planet. And she's literally... Here's how far her, her deal goes. She's literally dug out a tunnel, through, by, thanks to help of her dragons, to basically... She basically has dug a tunnel so big it goes from China all the way to the U.S., and it's, she has poppy fields the size of Australia. And all she wants to do is be a drug lord. Just, that's it. <laughs> There's no grand evil scheme. There's nothing there. And when she explains it, like, yeah, when the whole, you know, everyone's fighting for control up here, I'm ruling from down here. And the guy she's talking to is like, yeah, that actually is an awesome plan. <laughs> The big, th that's, again, you really have to take into consideration that you're, you're reading a comic of Wolverine and a talking gorilla fighting dragons at the center of the earth. Again, <laughs> like I said, or Jason Aaron knows how to, you know, write a completely ridiculous story and make it fun and serious at the same time. Um, I think this is towards the end of his Wolverine run, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is towards the end, because this is right after the events of the Red Right Hand and him killing all of his... His, uh, all of his illegitimate children, of course, except for Dokken, and he basically is kind of dealing with that in here. Now, the main, the main thing is that, much like with X-Men Exalted, with uh, Astonishing X-Men Exalted, is that it, it's, it, it kind of falls into the same problem of the story's a little too short. In fact, really, the story's just a three-parter of Wolverine trying to get his money back, <laughs> and you can... I wanted to bring this up earlier... But you can clearly see there is a hu um, there is a huge reference to with just this kind of absurd story. This is clearly inspired by Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. Just imagine instead of Wol just imagine Wolverine instead of Jack Burton in this story, and you can see where I'm coming from. I'm very certain that <laughs> that Jason Aaron was basically trying to make his own version of Big Trouble in Little Chinatown 
um, but with Wolverine instead, which is not too far from Jack Burton, in a, almost in a way. Um, all we're missing is a low pan villain, and we've got it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the story realistically only has three is only a three part story, and I feel like it should have been a little longer. Uh, but and the fourth issue that is contained in this trade mostly figu- um, focuses on on Wolverine having almost a gang war with Kingpin, and it's all uh, se- uh, created by Sabretooth. Um, who came back from hell with Wolverine. So, this is all around a pretty fun comic. If you really enjoyed the Jason Aaron run of Wolverine, I would say pick this up if you haven't already. It, this is just tons of fun. Um, I think you can pick this up without, you know, really knowing too much about Wol- the Wolverine run, run, other than, yeah, Wolverine and the, you know, the X-Men have kind of had their own little schism, and now they're kind of separating. So that's really only the major thing in here. Uh, We also get a little more with Wolverine's uh, love interest, Melita, at the time, but now X at this point, but yeah. And she gets to do some fun stuff towards the end as well. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. It can be bloody, it can be serious, it can be so many things. I'm like, how did Jason Aaron do all this in just four issues, really? Um, (laughs) It's This is a lot of fun. Just, again, imagine Big Trouble in Little Chinatown, but with Wolverine instead of Jack Burton. That's really the best way to describe Goodbye Chinatown. Anyway, so if you've read the comic, just comment below, let me know what you guys thought of it, and once again, hope you all enjoyed this review, and I will see you guys later.